Hi, this is Johannes Krieger with Senshi Knives. In this video I will show you the entire process of turning this very old file from my grandfather into Frodo's sword Sting out of the famous Lord of the Rings movies. Enjoy! As you can see, the file is neither long or wide enough right now. So I start with forging the tip of the sword longer and wider to establish the leaf blade shape. You can see me using a fuller here to move the material much more efficiently and controlled. Now I narrow down the bottom half of the sword to be to gain a little bit more length. Then I will proceed with spreading the material in the Ricasso area to establish the area in front of the guard. This was actually pretty difficult because I didn't have enough material to make it the same thickness as the rest of the area. So I already started to forge in the bevels here. Something I have never done before and really don't like to do. After the template fitted the rough forged shape, I straightened it out and annealed the material so I could proceed with tackling the surface with my belt grinder. I used my big 30cm contact wheel to reduce any file mark and forging residue to establish a relatively flat surface. Then I used the flat plate at my grinding table to establish the profile, which I traced from a template with spray paint. With the profile finished, I normalized the blade, preheat my oil in dramatic fashion and harden the blade. I tempered the blade in the oven off-camera and now I have to start the bevel grind on this leaf-shaped blade with double bevels. This gave me absolute nightmares because of the different angles and thicknesses. 
all while the center line needed to be as straight as possible. I started with establishing straight cutting edges and pushed the bevels back until they met at the center line. I also needed to monitor the temperature pretty closely because I didn't want to break my temper and make the blade softer. Oh, and of course, after the belt sanding, there is hand sanding. And a lot more of it, but I will spare you of that. With the blade finished so far, it is on to the guard and let me tell you, this is a complicated one. Because there is literally no flat reference surface in that shape. But Enough with the whining, and let's start by cutting a chunk from this piece of steel I found at the junkyard. Firstly, I established some of those flat reference surfaces on the belt grinder, before I traced the outline of the guard on the piece and marked the center. I used this to drill the holes for the tang, but leave it be for now, because I first need to remove a lot of material. I use my angle grinder to cut out some big chunks, before I go back to the belt sander to finalize the shape. With this done, I start carving out the slot for the blade and tang to sit on. This is particularly difficult because the blade tapers to the outside, which makes access to the slot very difficult. And it fits nicely! But there is no time to waste, and it is on to the handle. I use a nice piece of unknown hardwood that could be some sort of teak, but I'm really not sure because I found it in an old scrap wood box from my dad. With the tang slotted, I traced the shape of the guard on the wood and used a flat surface to make sure the handle sits perfectly straight afterwards. After a little rat tang welding, I can assemble it for the first time and check my fit ups and if everything is straight. For the handle shaping, I hover it over the table saw and it gets cut magically. With everything fitted, I can kiss the last flat surface on the guard goodbye and establish the final shape. This is the pump. I think it's the single most complicated shape I've ever tried to make, and because I'm an idiot, I didn't have material wide enough around. So enjoy this compilation of me trying to upset this piece of round bone.
that didn't really go well. But I thought at the time that I needed to do this at least a few times over and didn't really bother. I established again some right angles and determined the piece is big enough before drilling a hole in its center to cut a thread so I could attach an axis to this piece. With that, I made myself a very dangerous lathe and started carving the rotation symmetric shape of the pommel. While still having a flat surface, I widened the hole in the center and put the thread in a lot deeper so I could round over the flat end. Oh, and I will use that later to attach the pommel to the sword. From here, it was just an absolute guessing game of how to finalize this shape. To very much of my surprise, I was able to actually pull it off first try and also almost perfect. I really did not expect that at all. After a little bit of finger defying sanding in my makeshift lathe, I ran it over the handle and made sure the handle fitted inside the pommel. I also made a little M10 nut to tighten everything down and screw the pommel on. And with that, there is just finishing work to do, so I hand sand everything up to a 400 grit finish and soak the handle in linseed oil. Now for the artwork on the blade, guard and handle. I can use my plotter to cut out the desired shapes and etch them in the steel with no problem. But there is no template for that. So I need to use a picture and the dedicated software to mark the outline of the artwork for the plotter by hand. This took me literal hours to do, but it was really, really rewarding in the end. After my plotter cut the shapes from vinyl, I remove all the bits I want etched and transfer it onto the blade. Then I use the standard electro etching method to etch the artwork deep into the blade. process on the guard and then it is on to the handle. This was so much more complicated. The main faces were pretty easy because again I could use pictures to trace the exact shape and just transfer it onto the wood. But there are no clear pictures of the sides of this handle. So I had to use little snippets from the main faces and patchwork the entire sides. That took an entire day.
After I took about an entire hour to decide which spray paint I would use, I settled on a metallic silver over a plain grey one. And it turned out fantastic. I originally wanted to apply a protective layer, but the paint is so strong, there is no need for that. So, after a lot of work, there is only sharpening left to do before the final reveal. The looks are alright, but can it cut? Thank you for watching and see you next time, bye.